Hey, we got a TDS 540 acquisition board here today. Uh, this is uh, from a Tektronix TDS 540 uh, oscilloscope, 500 megahertz forward channel. Uh, I wasn't going to make a video because it was just a standard capacitor replacement. Uh, these scopes, the uh, the A series or the A models, the B models, and then the models without any letter like suffix, uh, have problems with the capacitors leaking. It's a known problem. I'm not just capa uh, capacitor replacing for no reason. It's um, the, yeah, they do leak and they need to be replaced sooner rather than later. This board luckily was um, not too bad. There was uh, almost no leakage at all on the main board. Almost no leakage. There was a tiny bit. So I, uh, I pulled all the old capacitors off through the uh, circuit board and the uh, processor board, the one that goes on top of the scope with the CPU on it, uh, into the dishwasher. Yes, into the dishwasher for a, uh, a full cycle and uh, then uh, let it dry off and this has actually been a couple of weeks now it's been drying so um it's perfectly dry perfectly clean no damage whatsoever from the dishwasher and uh yeah it's i've got all new capacitors all over the board there was one problem though and that is on this little daughter board here the problem wasn't the fact that i just pulled it off without uh you know any effort whatsoever i desoldered this but the two capacitors on this board were leaking quite badly to the point that um hopefully you can see there's quite a bit of corrosion and uh the corrosion's gone through some of the vias and whatnot and i just thought well i'm not going to bother trying to repair that so what i've done is i've made a design uh you can see it on the screen now uh i did that in uh, the dip trace that i normally use and uh, it's uh it was a pretty simple circuit, so I just whipped it up and uh, made some designs. So, talk to my good friends at PCB Way, of course, and we have now some PCBs. Luckily, uh, the schematics for this um, this scope are available online. All the links, of course, for all the files and everything will be down below. So, uh, making this these replacement circuit boards was very easy. Uh, some of the other scopes like the 600 and 700 series unfortunately have never had their uh, schematics released um, if anyone who used to work or does work at Tektronix wants to release those uh, schematics because they are old scopes um, please do because a lot of us will be made very very happy if we had schematics for the uh, the range of TDS series scopes but this scope they were released I believe that was for a, some sort of government contract to sell these to the government con for the government contract one of the requirements was to have schematics available, so they are now available. So there is our replacement. We've got one, two, three, four, five of them. And we have got basically a perfect one-to-one -one copy. Now there was one little trick. There's an inductor on this board, but it's not a component. It's right there. You see that trace looping around? Hopefully that's going to focus. There's a trace just here. L was at 101. You can see it over here. So I had to get the uh, calipers out, get my uh, magnifying glass and held my tongue in the right position and measured that up as accurately as possible so I could get that inductor the correct size. Um, besides that, it was just laying it out. And I laid out the uh, circuit board almost exactly the same. Uh, there's a, you know, some minor differences, but it's basically 100% the same so that is what we're going to make I've got all my parts here they got to go on there and that has got to go in there and then hopefully this scope will just work I've done all the capacitor replacements on both of the boards like I said um, fiddle around with the uh, removing the reefer capacitors in the power supply and uh, hopefully it will boot once we put this in
and there it is, all done, looking really good. Uh, the CR101 I had to remove from the original board because it's an obsolete part. I'm, I haven't been able to find an easy substitution for it. If anyone knows a substitution for an MMBV105G by OnSemi, let me know. Um, they don't make them anymore, and I'm not up with the uh, the latest of those sort of diodes. It's a silicon tuning diode or a voltage variable capacitance diode. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about like cross-referencing those sort of things because that's not really my ballpark. But yeah, luckily that part was a long way from the uh, capacitors, so it wasn't affected by the corrosion so much. And uh, that's just been moved over to there. If anyone knows, let me know, and um, I'll update the bomb for that. So now we're good to put this into our main board. So that is going to sit, where is it, right there. So that's going to be fine, nice. All right, board is back in the scope. There's our new one there. All connected up, ready to go. So let's put the case on and uh, see what happens when it boots. Um, I'm going to put the case on before I turn on because I don't want the uh, chips here to overheat. Uh, without the case on, you don't get the proper airflow going through and stuff. So yeah, you got to make sure you've got supplemental uh, cooling, like an extra fan going if you run these things open. Otherwise, you do risk burning out some of the chips. So let's see what happens. Just before I turn it on, I have already replaced the NV RAM here, the Dallas NV RAM. These have an inbuilt battery, and uh, when the scope is of this age, these batteries tend to be starting to go flat. They the lifetime is about 10 years or so, and this is well past that 10 years. The batteries have proven to last a lot longer than the rated specs, but yeah, they are getting to the point where you want to uh, start looking at at replacing them. Uh, this one here is a DS 1245Y dash 70. Uh, the dash 70 just means the uh, the access time, 70 nanoseconds. Um, these can still be bought brand new from DigiKey Mouser. That's what this one here is. It's got a uh, date code of uh, 0223. That's the uh, second week or second month. Anyway, it's from 2023. It's from this year, earlier this year. So this is brand new. Uh, it costs about 20 to 30 bucks American, I think close to twenty dollars twenty five dollars maybe uh, i found that if you don't live in america it's easy to buy them from digikey because they do ship uh these internationally they got it two lithium batteries inside little coin cells uh, mouser just flatly refused to uh post them international because lithium batteries are bad in the post so um yeah unfortunately uh mouser missed out on that one but uh yeah some of them you can't get anymore the ones with the real-time clock chip inside them uh, you can't get new, uh, not in this form factor anyway. But there are some uh, people on eBay uh, that have made replacements that you can buy as like a kit for different um, different scopes. So check that out if you need them. But this one here was uh, available from DigiKey, so that's been the old one's been pulled out. I've pulled the data out on the uh, the chip programmer and then programmed it back in the new chip, and this is now socketed too. So. Um, it can be replaced easily in the future. Just watch out if you've got the TV option It's a circuit board that sits here. If you put this in a socket, it will be too tall uh, Because the uh, the space between this board and the underside of the TV board is exactly the same as uh, The thickness of this whole chip So if you've got the TV board you have to directly solder this back in this doesn't have the TV option So I've put it in a socket just to make it easier in <laughs> 20 years when this needs to be replaced again all right, we're all back together, ready to see if this thing powers up and boots properly. So hit the button. The LEDs on the front panel have lit up. We are getting a display. It's Is it going to test the RAM, the VRAM? Yes. VRAM tests are going. It's got the squiggly line. The clock symbol has come up. That's good. That means the processor is doing stuff. I can hear the attenuator relays clicking. Click again, yes, and we're getting a display, yes, ready, ready, there it is, fantastic, power on self-check passed, hell yeah, it's working, fantastic, firmware version 2.16e, blah, 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 hit the button, and now we can go and shift utility, 
uh, system config, go to cal, and we can test the, uh, do the signal path compensation, the SPC. So we'll run that. Um, let that run. I'll be back in a sec once it's passed or failed, see what happens. And that is passed. Signal path pass. Fantastic. This scope is working perfectly. Two enthusiastic thumbs up. So uh, all the files, the Gerber files and whatnot, will be down in the links below. Uh, I hope that helps you fix your scope. So I uh, hope you found that interesting, somewhat informative. We'll see you in the next video.